Mum had this amazing smile. When she picked me up from school, I couldn't wait to be hugged by that smile. Especially if I got told off by horrible Mrs Thorne for messy handwriting or dripping green paint down my cardi again. Yeah. I'd see Mum stood at the gates in her latest sheepskin coat and I'd stop all my worrying. She could make anything okay. Squeezing my hand, she'd whisper, Flora love, we're just a scribble of jeans. Nothing will make sense till we're as old as the Licky Hills. And that'd make me smile, because no one's as old as the Licky Hills. We stayed close, even when I got to big school. Other girls fell out with their mums, but she wouldn't let me. She'd make a silly face. We'd just end up laughing. So, yeah, it was hard. It was agony losing her so young. Middle of my last exam. Although they never told me to look them out. I couldn't open my results when they arrived. Nor could Dad. So, I'm still not sure if I got my maths. Didn't seem to matter anymore. I got a nice job at the garden centre where Dad worked, looking after the new seedlings. I did okay, you know. Petunias don't mind if you're a bit sad. My co-workers were always enjoying themselves, Showing off to customers, cheeking the boss, flirting with the new recruits. Me? So long as my flowers were thriving, I was happy to watch from the sidelines. I was sort of living in the gaps, I suppose. One day, this customer comes in, smiley lady. Looked a bit like mom in a sheepskin, though she could have done with a bigger size. Anyway, she's full of thanks for me suggesting white pearls for a north-facing back garden. She'd brought a ton of photos to show me, plus a giant box of quality streets. And says how lucky I am not to be working in a boring office like she did. I got green fingers of the week for that. And more quality streets. So I needed a bigger size myself then. But I thought, yeah, she's right. I am lucky to be surrounded by these pinks. And so many blues. And all the emerald ferns from Holland. Some days I stand in the glass house doorway. There's a cheeky blackbird obsessed with our fire thorn. So he bellows out his love song while I breathe in the morning scent of the blooms. And I can feel the fresh green of the air fill my lungs. Wasn't long after we finished the quality streets when I clocked Dave from account smiling at me. Turns out he fancied me rotten since I tried claiming some bright red wellies on expenses. Yeah, that was nice. He brought a bit of order to my life, you know. Because you can have your wild, beautiful mess of Mother Nature and a little bit of order too. It can work. It did for us. When our kids come along... And watch them having fun and think, I like living in the gaps. Because you can see things from a different angle. And someone's got to keep everyone else going. Someone's got to be in the background, making sure things work. Caring for the kiddies was the same as caring for my petunias. Ever so careful at first. Then, a tiny bit less fussing. Until you can sit back and enjoy them get going for themselves. Yeah. Things finally seem to make sense. 
and I'm not even as old as the Licky Hill, so Mom be proud. I feel a smile in every new bloom. All the stuff I've learnt, the little tips, I share with the new staff, including the sulky young'uns who rum in their earphones rather than listen. Mind you, even the customers don't want advice nowadays. They just want a discount. There's no secrets any road, because it's all online, isn't it? Like my tip about wing in the compost bin. Nothing sacred. Anyway, my petunias still need me. Although they're not blooming so well this year. Not sure why. I think someone's forgotten to check for aphids. I can see the new boss blames me, but I told her. I always do it. So I must have. Except... I can't always see out of the gaps. Dave says I'm getting forgetful, which we all are, aren't we? We're getting older. At the end of the day, we're just a scribble of genes. Like I said to the doctor person who we went to see, she had this half-dead poinsettia on a windowsill and I couldn't help shifting it because the poor thing was suffering something terrible with the draft. That's when she leant towards me, head on one side, and and she looked so amazingly sad. I said, don't be upset, lady. Don't cry. It, it might never happen. Okay, I couldn't remember the silly address she told me, but... I'm not sure she even said it. I am sure about one thing. Mom will tell Mrs Thorne not to be so mean when she fetches me later. Even if I've been naughty. Can't wait to feel a smile. Because then I can stop my worrying. She'll make everything okay. Yeah, she always does.